I just, I just walked in and man, my hump is killing me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carl the Camel and well, I heard you have an auction coming up in late October. You know what I plan to offer? If, if you bid on me, I'll show up at your work or where you live on a Wednesday and just yell, hump day. <laughs> I'm, I'm here today because it's the water service and know a thing or two about the importance of water. Camels, you see, live mostly in the desert, and so we know how precious the cool, refreshing waters of the oasis are. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about living in the desert. See, camels have all sorts of special things to help them survive. We have special feet that allows us to walk on the sand. We have nostrils that can trap moisture inside our bodies. We have long eyelashes to keep the sand out of our eyes. And of course, we have a fatty hump that helps our bodies to stay cool in the hot desert sun. I like to sing a song about my hump. It goes, my hump, my hump, my lovely camel bump. <laughs> and did you know in Arabic, in Arabic, that the word for beauty and the word for camel are related. And that makes sense because I am a very beautiful camel. <laughs> so even though... <laughs> uh... <laughs> even though camels don't need a lot of water, there are other parts of a camel's life where we can feel thirst. The other day, I was at the camel playground, a playground that I'd never been to before, and there were a group of camel children having a fun time playing games. I was a little nervous, but I got up my courage and went over and asked if I could play with them, and they were so mean to me. They were, they were all two humped camels, but they pointed at my one hump and told me, that they only want to play with camels with two humps. Isn't that a mean thing to say? I was one sad dromedary. <laughs> and, and I felt in that moment, I felt sad, but I felt thirsty in that moment, thirsty for friendship and thirsty for acceptance and thirsty to be valued as I am. In the desert, there's a place called an oasis. It's where you can find water and feel refreshed. There's shade and lush vegetation, but mostly it's a place where you feel safe. It isn't harsh like the desert. Have you ever been to a place in your life that feels like an oasis? Maybe it's, maybe it's a summer camp that feels like an oasis of community. Maybe it's a special teacher that can make a class feel like an oasis. Or maybe it's even this church community. Church can feel like an oasis, a heart place, a safe place, a community place. At the Camel Oasis, we've learned that we need to take special care to make sure that the oasis stays special. And there are some camels who thought that, that to make the oasis seem special, you need to keep people out or worry about who's doing what or, or to try your best to keep the oasis from changing. But oasis is they move. They, they move to different spots in the desert. You never know where one is going to spring up. What makes an oasis an oasis, wherever it is, is hospitality, is welcoming everyone in to partake of that cool water. It's treating people as you would want to be treated. And it's remembering that in the oasis of community, we all have a responsibility to do our part. And so what I'd like to do with us now... I'm going to take this. There we go. All right. That's, that's better. So, <laughs> yeah, you didn't know who that was, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did a research project on camels. I learned a lot about them on, the, on Wikipedia. <laughs> what I'd love for us to do um, is to, to try um, something that I call embodied meditation. As, as Unitarian Universalists, we often get 
up in our heads and into our thinking cells, but embodied meditation allows us to really uh, feel in our body. And so you can do this um, you can do this sitting or you can do this standing however you would like. And so if, you, if you'd like to stand, you can stand. If you'd like to sit, you can sit. All right, we have one stander. Thank you. <laughs> and so what I'd like to do is have a few moments of, of meditation together, and then we'll sing together. So let us begin this, this time of meditation by taking in a few deep breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathe out. One more time. Breathe in and breathe out. I want you to imagine with me. I want you to imagine that you are traveling on a journey through the desert. I want you to move your toes and feel, if you can't imagine, the sand, the dry sand underneath your toes. I want you to see if you can't imagine the wind blowing across the desert. Let's see if you can't imagine the high sun at noon and the cool breeze of night. And see if you can imagine the million stars in the sky. I want to imagine that as you are on your journey, you come to that oasis place, that place of rest and refreshment, that place of hospitality where you're welcomed in, that place of cool water that you drink. Imagine feeling that cool water flow through you, flow into your belly, flow into your arms and your legs and feel the shade above you. Take a moment to notice, to open your eyes and to look around and notice all of the other traveling companions on the journey with you. Take a moment to imagine their stories, the deserts they've come th over, the journeys that they've taken, the uh, stopping places where they've paused. Imagine in your heart being fully welcomed and loving the story of each traveling companion so much that you fully welcome them here. invite you to pause and to reconnect with your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. And breathing in and breathing out. And as we continue with that breathing, I invite us to sing a song of our hearts together. We're going to sing meditation on breathing. The words are simple. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace, and when I breathe out, I breathe out love. Won't you sing? Good morning. This morning, we worship as an entire community of all ages. Many of you brought water for the water service, which we will do at the end of the service. We as individuals bring water to the service as a symbolic act to mix and mingle all of our waters together. Why do we bring water? Well, water is awesome. Water is necessary for life. Plants and animals need water to survive. When plants don't get enough water, leaves droop and wilt, 
and become yellow and brown. When animals and human beings don't get enough water, they suffer from what is called dehydration. Dehydration can be a serious medical condition. When people are dehydrated, they become irritable and weak and sluggish and dizzy. They can get headaches, feel confused, and even faint. That's what happens to us when our bodies are thirsty. Water is an essential element of life. But it is also possible to imagine that our spirits, like our bodies, can be thirsty too. Think about it. When we are safe and cared for, when we are curious and interested, when we are joyful and delighted, we can feel nourished, quenched, filled, refreshed, and cooled in our spirits too, as if we are full of cool, sweet water. It is also possible for our spirits to feel dry and thirsty. When we are tired and uninspired, we feel dry. We are restless. We are unsatisfied. A deep longing can feel like thirst. In the Hebrew Bible, there is a book called the Book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet. A prophet is someone who can see the problems of the current day with a clear vision and who speaks powerfully and passionately about those problems and how they might be changed, and he can or she can often be irritating to the people who hear the prophet. Ezekiel lived about 2,500 years ago. He lived in a time that was very difficult, and a lot of people were suffering. His people had been conquered by an invading army and forced to move far away from their homes. In the story, it says that the people were so sad that they cried out in thirst in their spirits. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. In the book of Ezekiel, there is a famous story that Ezekiel had a vision that came to him in a dream. In his dream, Ezekiel dreamed of a valley of dry bones, land so parched that there was not much but cactus and rocks and bones bleached white by the sun. In his dream, Ezekiel hears the voice of his God asking him, Can these bones live? And then, in the dream, the bones began to rattle, and they joined back together in skeletons, and then water flows back into them, and they get their muscles and skin and blood, and then they get their breath. When you have a dream like that, you tend to remember it. (laughs) Ezekiel took the lesson from his dream that he should give a message of hope and life to his people who were feeling discouraged and dried out in their spirits. So today, we come together once again as a community to begin our church year together. What do you thirst to bring to the community? What has left you feeling parched and hopeless or dried up into dust? Do you thirst for connection, for understanding, for meaning? Do you thirst for justice, for change, for the chance to make a difference in your community or in the world? Do you long for peace, forgiveness, and self-acceptance? In just a moment, Our children's choir will sing Dem Bones, which is a song inspired by Ezekiel's vision. Many of us adults learned this song as children and knew it just as a funny and somewhat educational song for young children. But it is a song that actually originated as a religious song, a spiritual, and singing it reminded people that there is a glorious spiritual water that can quench any thirst and that what has been broken apart can be reconnected and reanimated.